Hello, everyone. I'm Zhe. It's my pleasure to present our work entitled Fast Calcium Trace Extraction for Large Field of View Miniscope. This work is a joint collaboration between computer science and psychology departments at UCLA. Developed at UCLA, the Miniscope has become a popular device in supporting real-time monitoring of cell activity from a certain brain region in vivo, which means recording calcium images while allowing the animal to behave freely in an open field. The spatial resolution of the state-of-the-art LFOV miniscope can be quite large, about 1300 by 1000. The temporal resolution is above 20 frames per second. Depending on the targeted brain region, the video session can record hundreds or even over a thousand cells. This figure shows a snapshot of a cropped calcium image with projected cell contours. Analyzing the calcium image video often requires extracting cell traces from the raw video. The volume of the input data can be quite large considering the spatial and temporal resolutions, while the cell activity information we care about is really small. Expensive computation steps sit in between, including the motion correction, the denoising, and the deconvolution. Open Time's analysis pipeline processes the calcium image video offline. This process requires all of the data to be stored on the disk. The most popular calcium image analysis pipeline is based on the method called CNMFE, which represents for extended constrained and negative matrix vectorization. The computation complexity of this algorithm is in proportion to the number of pixels and the number of frames being processed. However, it often requires batch processing so it is hard to be realized in real time. A main target of this project is to enable closed loop feedback capability for behavior experiments in neuroscience research. We selected Silent O Programmable SOC, which integrates an FPGA in it to develop and implement the real time calcium image processing. Our design has two main considerations. First, the design needs to achieve short and deterministic latency on the calcium image processing in order to realize the closed loop feedback. Second, we have to make our algorithm and hardware design efficient given the limited resources on the FPGA device. In summary, our goal is to realize real-time trace extraction from calcium images for large field of view miniscope within one millisecond, which is the time precision of the cell firing. The outline of our presentation is organized as follows. I would first like to introduce our real-time calcium image processing pipeline. Then I'll spend a few slides mainly introducing our trace extraction hardware design. Following that, I'll present three latency optimization methods we proposed to help meet the latency target. And finally, I'll show the performance evaluation. Our pipeline includes three processing steps. The first two are the motion correction and the calcium image enhancement. The motion correction is an important pre-processing step, and it helps remove the motion artifacts in the raw video caused by the movement of the brain tissue during the recording. The image enhancement re removes the bulk of the calcium image background and improves the signal-to-noise ratio, as the video clip shows. The third step is the main focus of this presentation, the trace extraction, which calculates the calcium traces reflecting cell activity based on the pre-stored binary cell contours. Our customized processing pipeline is a frame-based stream processing. And by doing that, we have chance to lower down the latency and reduce extra memory access. This figure shows our developed hardware and embedded systems for the real-time calcium image processing. We implemented the dedicated motion correction, image enhancement, and calcium trace extraction accelerators on the FPGA. The embedded ARM processor on the SOC chip can communicate with the FPGA and an external interface PCB board, transferring raw image data from the data acquisition DAQ to the FPGA and sending the extracted traces from the IPGA to the host PC over the Ethernet. The figure on the 
bottom right shows the timing diagram of the operations among the accelerators. From it, we can see that a large part of the enhancement and the sensor image readout is overlapped thanks to our streaming processing fashion. The motion correction's timing depends on the user-defined image subregion for the template matching, but for sure it can complete during the image readout. The trace extraction needs to apply on the motion corrected and enhanced images. So it has to wait the enhancement step to finish until it can start. We define the latency as the time interval between the end of the image readout and the end of the overall causing image processing for the current frame. Since we can overlap a lot of computation with the image readout, the latency can be largely reduced. We also built local BRAM buffer to store the enhanced image. It helps eliminate the off-chip DRAM masses and improve the efficiency. This figure details the tracing accelerator design. It is a 1D Cisali array composed of customizable and scalable tracing elements, TEs. It takes one input pixel at each clock cycle. Each TE preloads tracing information for eight different cells. For each cell, we keep the cell center and the 25 by 25 binary cell contour for the trace extraction. These cell contours are stored in local BRAMs inside the TEs. In this way, the design avoids off-chip memory access during the tracing process. This figure gives an example of operation for the tracing accelerator. Assuming at the clock cycle n, a sequence of input data has been fed into the tracing accelerator. At clock cycle n plus one, the pipeline moves forward. The input data includes the raw and column indices and the intensity value of a pixel. Next and next, the pipeline moves one step forward per clock cycle. Within this clock cycle, every TE compares the input raw and the column indices against the preloaded cell centers. If it finds the input pixel falls inside the cell contour, the local trees register updates its value by accumulating the input pixel intensity. Otherwise, the trees register keeps unchanged. Next, we introduce three latency optimization methods for the tracing accelerator. The first one, we call it region segmentation. In our design, we reuse the tracing accelerator for four times to complete all the trace extraction tasks. By default, cells distribute evenly in each round of the tracing, as figure A shows. If we segment regions and constrain the cell locations, within a certain region under each iteration, we can save the computation time because we can bypass the scanning of a large portion of image under each iteration. The second latency optimization, we call it fast forward. As the name implies, it can speed up the regular scanning of pixels during the trace extraction. In fact, we found that a large part of the causing image has continuous background pixels. Feeding in those background pixels into the tracing accelerator just keeps the accelerator idle and that does not make any effects on the trace extraction results. By skipping this part, we can further reduce the latency. This figure shows the detailed circuit design of the fast forward mechanism. We figured out the skipping locations offline and stored them inside the on-chip BRAM buffer. A comparator keeps track of the row and column indices of the scanned pixels. Once it hits the target skipping location, it triggers a fast forward event and it updates the memory address accordingly for fetching the next input pixel. In this way, the fast forward mechanism can be realized. We also benchmarked uh, an aggressive fast forward mode in which not only background pixels at both ends of the row are bypassed, the accelerator skips over every single background pixel. This no doubt 
causes additional overhead on storing extra skipping row and column indices. We evaluated the performance and the memory overhead between the normal and aggressive fast forward modes using six different cause image datasets collected from REDS. Evaluation results show that the aggressive fast forward mode contributes 21.3% of latency reduction on average, but requires 7.2 times more memory usage for storing the additional indices. The third latency optimization is a double buffering. In this method, we split the tracing accelerator into two even parts. And by doing so, the load and store time can overlap with the tracing operation time. As we hide the load and store time, the tracing accelerator can reduce the runtime and achieve additional speed back. Finally, this slide shows our implementation and the evaluation results. The photo displays our built hardware and the system for the real-time causing image processing and the trace extraction. The whole pipeline can fit into the Ultra 96 IPTA, though it has utilized almost all of the on-chip VRAM resources. The figure on the right shows the latency measurement results and the proposed optimizations. It also shows the effects on IPTA resource utilization. By combining these three optimization methods, the latency of our proposed pipeline can reduce to 589 microseconds, which is below one millisecond and satisfies our, our design target. In conclusion, in this presentation, we introduced our customized IPGA accelerator for real-time trace extraction from causing images. We discussed the three latency optimization methods by combining these three methods, the overall latency of the processing pipeline can be reduced to below one millisecond. With that, I believe our proposed methods have the potential to enable close to feedback capability for future brand research based on in vivo causing imaging. Thank you very much for your interests and attention.